What is an archetype? For me, it's the platonic ideal of something, often a character or figure, a total embodiment of a certain set of values, beliefs, or actions. Arnold Schwarzenegger is the archetypical action hero. Merlin is the archetypical wizard. The Virgin Mary is the archetypical saintly mother. This is pretty basic stuff. But a better question, I think, is why are archetypes so common in human storytelling? The Italian Commedia dell'arte used a rotation of stock characters, allowing for improvisational theater wherein certain actors could don a mask or persona, and the audience would instantly know what their whole deal was. Zani and clowns like the Harlequin were servants and fools at the bottom of the social order, playing tricks and eating ravenously. The young lovers were naive but faithful, upper class, always struggling to be together. And at the top wore Pantalone and the Doctor, masters of the house, rich beyond compare, but often petty or eager to prove how smart they were. These sort of shorthand characters persist well into the present day. American sitcoms are full of bumbling but well-meaning dads. Movies about US high schools will invariably sort students into jocks, nerds, goths, and stoners. And reality TV shows love to craft narratives about their contestants. Who's the good girl? Who's the fuck boy? Who's the manipulative traitor with a dagger always behind their back? Media is full of shorthands, I think, because it eases the process of storytelling, helps onboard audiences to convey what each character is capital A about, so that you don't really need a bunch of backstory and exposition, and can get onto the meat of the plot. But we don't just use shorthands in media, because they're a staple of everyday life as well. How many times have you been stuck in traffic behind someone with a particular bumper sticker and gone, ah, I know everything I need to know about this person. Stereotypes and assumptions exist because it's just easier to get through life that way. And frankly, especially if you're a younger person, not sure how to navigate life in the first place, it's sometimes easier to lean into those assumptions and stereotypes. If you don't know who you are when you're boiled down to your essence, it may be less painful to just pick an archetype and say, yeah, that's me. When reading Sam Wee's Capitalites, I could not stop thinking about archetypes and the ways in which we construct and perform identity. The game is pretty explicitly about taking stereotypical people, throwing them into messy and dramatic situations, and having fun with the scenes that emerge. Players of Capitalites act as showrunner and actor and audience to their very own reality show, embodying hot young people in the city, a collaboratively built setting inspired by a half dozen Southeast Asian metropolises. Together with the people at your table, you'll plot out what you'd like to happen throughout the course of each scene of your TV show, pick the characters who will bumble their way through them, and then act the scenes out to your satisfaction. The acting is maybe the most important part of the game. In fact, I think Capitalites truly is an evolution of the Commedia dell'arte, because it is, at its core, a game about types of people and how they perform the roles they think are expected of them. There's not traditional game mechanics in Capitalites, it's much closer to improv theater than it is to Dungeons and Dragons. Side note, I think you could easily define theater as a type of game, but that's a whole other essay. Instead, it uses the framework of a television series to guide its players toward the kinds of stories they want to tell. Players start by breaking down a series Bible worksheet, determining tone, themes, and content rating of their program, imagining the city characters inhabit, and then drafting a thematic playlist. Once the overarching idea for the TV show is built, Players zoom into each session as if it were a single episode, discussing what events should take place throughout the game, what piercing questions main characters should have to face. I like this structure a lot because it not only helps set conversations about player safety and game content early, but it also creates an expectation for the point where you want your characters to end up, helping get everyone else on board with your preferred narrative arc. During each episode, you'll establish A and B plots, the two stories that will be happening during the session one that is typically more important, and a second one that may have a more trivial purpose. This is a useful way to advance a few primary storylines while still keeping side characters involved in play. Once you figure out what you want your characters to be doing during the session, players embody their characters and follow the stated plots, moving toward the conclusion you hope to reach. Mui advises players to, when they don't know precisely what they want to do, to literally fuck shit up, acting their worst or best, or simply just ask what the most interesting thing that could happen might be. In my own games, I often stop to ask my friends what the most interesting outcome of a situation might look like, so I fully approve of this style of structured play.
The reality TV framing of Capitalites is a great schema to set up interesting roleplay scenarios, but I think the actual meat of the game is in its characters. It's why I'm so interested in this game's connection to archetypes. Instead of unique moves or combat abilities, Capitalites playbooks hold answers about a particular stereotype's personality, interests, and beliefs. Furthermore, there's a guide to making the most of a character's interactions with other archetypes as well. Just like Commedia dell'arte, Capitalites playbooks are literally playbooks in that they contain strategies for certain scenarios, rules of thumb for how a certain kind of person performs their role in relation to another. For example, let's look at the abstinent class. This is your classic church girl, straight edge, often religious, either a buzzkill or responsible depending on how you feel about them. It's not a huge leap to imagine how this kind of person should behave. However, you can get the most out of their character type when you pair them with people like the slut, contrasting their prudish nature with more lascivious tendencies, or the heathen, another archetype whose relationship with their faith is a central pillar of their identity. All in all, Capitalites does a wonderful job of showing players how to engineer interesting and messy situations, getting the most mileage out of the kinds of conflict that would erupt when you throw a bunch of 20-something stereotypes together. There's over 20 different playbooks in Capitalites, each a caricature of a kind of person you've probably met. The career woman, the rich kid, the himbo. But if you read into the fine details of the archetypes, you'll find each has a full interior life, with motivations and insecurities that clash and mesh with the other people they may collide with in the city. The himbo is genuine and muscular, but he knows that his wholesome exterior could conceal a toxicity that others let him get away with, while still potentially being victimized because, like, how could anyone hurt a man that big? Every playbook wants its players to think about the kinds of people your characters are in a way that penetrates their facade, going so far as to ask about what their parents are like and what they secretly struggle with. Which is weird, right? This game is so set on stereotypes and performance, yet encourages players to genuinely get to know their characters. Why is a game about the art of leaning into what others want you to be, encouraging players to think at all about why a person might do what they do? Mui explains this game was born of their interest in the show Singapore Social, which rode off the coattails of crazy rich Asians, trying to highlight the glamorous lives of the city state's young and rich. While Singapore Social was criticized as being largely about shallow, privileged jerks, Mui took an interest in the cast members and, as he explains at the beginning of Capitalites, discovered that these wannabe stars were, when the cameras were off, normal people. Worse, they were normal people trying to pretend to be something or someone, either because that is what was expected of them as members of a reality TV show, or because it was their best way to survive in a world that glorifies sex and materialism above all else. We found in the Instagrams and interviews of the cast of Singapore Social a group of people that more closely resembled her and her group of friends than the hedonistic kids the Netflix series would have audiences believe. Just like so many other people stumbling their way through adulthood, they found a niche and dug in, hoping their superficiality could help them weather the storm. As a result, Mui was compelled to write a game about stereotypes based on the real people in their life. The game states explicitly, this is not a work of fiction. All resemblances to persons, living or dead, are completely intentional and were obtained with consent. I think it's kind of a stroke of genius to build a game about fake people based on real ones. In a game interested in how others construct their identities, you literally perform your characters while planning out semi-scripted plot arcs while simultaneously performing your own identity in real life with the people you play the game with. There's a lot going on there. It's hard to say whether or not this game will work for you. Because Capitalites is so rules light, it really depends on the people you play with and the kinds of stories you want to tell. If you're a fan of No Dice, No Masters games, it's probably up your alley. But overall, I think the game is a fascinating framework for creating improvisational stories about being young and insecure. For me, the best part of Capitalites is how it provokes players into considering the ways in which all identity is constructed and performed, and tries to get into the heads of normal people who have defined themselves in particular ways. It's not only trying to get you to make messy and weird and hard choices, but also wants you to look past any given person's mask and ask why someone might choose to behave, dress, and act in a certain way, especially if it hurts themselves and others. Capitalites is a thoughtful, earnest text that at once demonstrates the utility of archetypes as a tool to navigate the world, 
while urging you to pierce the facade of performance, see past the roles we choose for ourselves, and imagine everyone in your own city is as full of life as you. Hey everybody, uh, thank you for watching. I really appreciate everybody who takes the time to uh, see what I'm saying about tabletop games. Uh, if you want to find more of my work, I'm at AaronSXL on Twitter. My main site is aavoid.com, where I talk about games, writing, and health policy. I also do two podcasts. The first is at Mortified Pod, where me and my friend Layla do critical media analysis. We actually are just about to talk about the 2013 walking simulator Gone Home, so I'm very excited for that conversation. I also do another show at The Bible Boys, where me and my ex-evangelical friends Michael and Josh talk about Christian media. Uh, our 100th episode was just released. It's uh, a rehash of our feelings about God's Not Dead, so please, uh, if that seems like something that you'd like to uh, dig into, uh, check them out. Thank you as always for watching. I uh, hope to have another video out in about two weeks. Um, until then, thank you. See ya.